the show. We mentioned uh, you're, you're a hometown boy, born in Seattle, spent time in Walla Walla, came back to Seattle, went back to college in, in Walla Walla. Um, take me back. What are your recollections as a boy growing up in the Northwest? Well, I grew up on a ranch outside of Walla Walla, Washington, mostly. And then we got a house in town. And, but I spent most of my young life on the ranches with my grandfather, my father. I mean, I slopped the hogs, I milked cows, I chased cattle, I did everything. But you know, they put us in the movies on Saturday mornings downtown at the Roxy Theater. And we saw all those great Western movies and the serials, Flash Gordon and all that stuff. And I thought, you know, there must be a bigger world out there somewhere <laughs> than taking care of these hogs. <laughs> and I guess I began to get a little interest and ambition in that direction. And my mother had been, uh, had uh, a scholarship in Hollywood as a singer and a pianist, and, and uh, uh, she kind of encouraged me. And the rest is history. And Bert, you were... It's all luck. <laughs> Bert, you were uh, a young, an athletic kid, right? Yeah. An ice skater from a very young age. At two. I was two. the world's youngest professional ice skater. My father owned a traveling ice show. Uh -huh. So he wanted to put me to work young, and I thought two might be a little on the young side. <laughs> and he was called Sparky. That's right. That's right. Tell and, us uh, why. But, uh, I, you know, I... I I was a very dedicated student. I, I went to uh, went to Beverly High. I lived in Southern California. Uh, I was in the top three percent in math and science in the college level at UCLA. I was supposed to be a nuclear physicist, although I kind of like Robin better. And uh, you know, uh, I loved athletics. I was black belt in karate since I was 16 years old. And which by that at that time, I'll tell you, nobody had ever heard of it except a very few people in California. Whereas now everybody knows about it. So it was a it was a lot of fun. And for me, I really liked the fight scenes. I liked all the action. It wasn't something that was uh, we had to put on anything or that I mean Adam and I are really you know, we're athletic people and we really enjoyed the fight scenes, we enjoyed the the, the, the action of, of climbing the walls, all that kind of stuff. And we enjoyed the audiences and playing to the audiences, but we did have the censors every week that were really honest because, you know, every week, oh, you can't do that, you can't say that. And yet, we did it anyway. In fact, there was, I don't, if you'd like me to mention the situation, there was a time Absolutely. when Adam and I had brought Batgirl into the uh, Batcave. I don't know how, if you remember that. We were going to show her the Batcave. We had to give her a little whiff of bat gas so she wouldn't recognize where she was. We brought her into the Batcave. We showed her the Batcave. And on the way out, there was this scene where uh, Adam, as Batman, is start getting ready to start up the Batmobile. Batgirl is sitting in between us. And I'm sitting, in, of course, in my chair. And uh, he gives her this bat gas and knocks her out. And we have this just very short dialogue, just a couple of lines. And you know, the two of us having worked together for so long, I mean, it, uh, nothing, you know, it's one of those things, first take. But it wasn't first take here. For some reason, my dear friend kept missing the lines, and, and I didn't understand because that's not like him. He, he knows the stuff. But by the time we got to take 11, and, and at $30,000 an hour, okay, and you could see the director panicking in, the, in his eyes, I knew that something really was up. And the dialogue was something like this. He's, I said, gosh, Batman, you know, Batgirl is really pretty. And he was, had his line was something to the effect of, well, Robin, I'm glad that you noticed, or something like that. <laughs> yeah, how did you mess up that for 11 takes? So anyway, so what happened? He, he was such a smart guy. Let me tell you, he knew the breaking point when they were going to have to use this next take no matter what. No matter what they were going to do. <laughs> Funny how your memory comes back when you have the right lines to say. So, uh, here we go. Take 12. You know, roll camera action. Gosh, Batman, you know, that girl is really pretty. And he says, you know, Robin, I'm glad you noticed. It shows the oncoming thrust of manhood. <laughs> now, now, I could hardly keep from laughing. I had tears coming down my mask. I didn't want to ruin the shot. 
The director didn't even notice. He was so desperate to move on to the next scene. But boy, next week when those censors came in, they were fatter than hell. 